Okay. It is 5.30, Tuesday, May 4th. I'm going to call our regular city council meeting into order. And we're going to, if you're going to stand with me and say the pledge, and I'm going to ask Brandon Huckabee if we will get us started with that. Please the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Tuckerby. I actually give a little bit of notice on that one, so. Tonight we have with us Kirk Blexo, who is the minister for the Church of the Nazarene here in town. He's also the chair of the local ministerial alliance. And again, I want to say to you and to everyone who comes to us, thank you for your prayers for what we do up here today and, and seeking God's guidance. Will you leave us an invocation? Yes, it is good to be here and representing the city of Stephenville. It's a great place. We're so blessed. Let's pray. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for in Stephenville. You are so patient with us, giving us so many opportunities. And even when we hit a roadblock, you always open up another office offer. You always start the conversation with, if you will, then I will. So tonight, as we go into this business meeting, we are open to your offer. Your offer time and time again is if my people will listen to my voice and accept my lifestyle, then will I bless you and I will be with you. We accept that offer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. I have one announcement I want to make. We have a special event downtown at one of the schools tonight in, in uh, honor of that. We're going to push, I'll push the agenda pretty hard tonight, so get ready to, to roll. First item is general discussion. Uh, we always open it up to people who want to say something to the city council. We have one person this time, our uh, former mayor, Kenny Weldon. Uh, would you come up and give your name and your address, uh, yeah, where you live, and three minutes. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Kenny Weldon, uh, 5550 County Road, 461 Steamville, Texas. And I walked in the room, everybody's going, what's he doing here? <laughs> I'll be very brief. Uh, I just wanted to come by and say thank you. I want to say thank you to the city council and the city staff for all the work that I know went into what went before the citizens this last Saturday. Uh, you did this for our community, and for that you should be proud. Uh, it was very disappointing, I must say, and, and I'll say this to the crowd that's in here tonight, because you're here because you believe in city government and, and the purpose of us getting together. But the turnout was an atrocious, I think I saw 12%. And as a veteran and as a, as a citizen of this country, I can't tell you how disappointing that is for us. And so we, we've got to find a way to, to, to work on that. But I don't want that to detract from the main thing I wanted you to hear from me tonight, and, and that is to say thank you. Uh, thank you for your work. Thank you for coming together and putting this proposal before the, the community. Um, you know, the current condition that this city is in, we did not get into overnight. It's due to a lack of decades of uh, the lack of investment in infrastructure and quality of life. And you can't make that up all in one day. But I will say that now you have a plan. You've put a plan in place. And the 21st century requires both a balance of safety, security, infrastructure, and quality of life. And your plan includes all those things. And so I would, to that, applaud you and say thank you for the work of putting that together. And finally, I would just want to share words of some great advice I got from a former boss of mine that said, uh, if you accept the first no, you probably deserve the answer. And I think with, with uh, what our community needs is your persistence and your diligence to continue to invest in the safety, security, infrastructure, and quality of life of our community. Thank you for your work. Thank you for all you've done. And God bless Steamville, Texas. Thank, Thank you, you, Kenny. Kenny. Thank, uh, you. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for what you had to say and for the leadership you gave this community for six years as mayor. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is we have a proclamation tonight. 
everybody I think in the room I've got a couple signatures I still need from some council members on this but we have a proclamation tonight for in memory of Sergeant Stephen Watts everybody I think most folks here knew about his passing and tonight we're gonna make a proclamation identifying April the 28th as the Sergeant Stephen Watts Day and we picked April 28th because his badge number was 428 so it's it's memorable it's memorable for that reason as well and so dan where's where's dan where's chief we're going to let dan say something here a minute after i read the proclamation and then we're going to take pictures and i've invited the whole council to come down to take that picture as we give you this this uh, proclamation so let me read the proclamation and then we'll let you say some things Dan. whereas sergeant stephen watts was born on september 24th 1967 in dallas texas to curtis and betty watts and whereas Sergeant Stephen Watts began his career serving others when he joined the United States Army in 1989, where he served as a member of the military police at West Point and in Korea. And whereas Sergeant Stephen Watts joined the Stephenville Police Department in 1996, where he proudly wore the badge number 428 as he was promoted to sergeant in 2000 and was promoted to sergeant in 2005. And whereas Sergeant Stephen Watts married the love of his life, Jenny, in 2007, and gained two children whom he loved and adored, Hannah and Nick. And Sergeant Stephen Watts was called to his heavenly home on April 26, 2021, after battling a short illness. And Sergeant Stephen Watts was always, will always be remembered for his kindness, patience, servant leader heart, and the city of Stephenville wishes to honor Sergeant Stephen Watts for his dedication, faithful service to the citizens of Stephenville. Now, therefore, we, the City Council, do hereby proclaim April 28th as Sergeant Stephen Watts Day in the city of Steamville, Texas, in honor of his life, legacy, and service to the citizens of Steamville, Texas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Distinguished members of the Council, the city of Stephenville last Monday lost one of the very best police officers that will have ever served for the Stephenville Police Department or this city. One of the best in my 31 and a half years I have ever served with. And there will be no other like him. I have asked all of the members of the department and those someday who will come to work for us to emulate his top-notch professional work ethic and try to strive to be like him every day. He worked with the special needs kids of this community. He worked with young men and women and recruited them to be police officers when they came from some of the most troubled homes in our great city. But I, I say this to all of you and first thank you again for that but also we as a department, Jenny, Nick, and Hannah, his mom, Betty, who lives near Waco and Hewitt, would not be in a place where we are today if it was not for the love of the citizens of this great city, the prayers, and the support that we have all received, and especially his family. And so for that, I can't thank everyone enough, and I can't say thank you enough. And so um, may God be with all of you and I'll say this to um, those you love, those who you cherish can be taken away from you in a second unexpectedly. Amen. So go home tonight, hug them, tell them how much you love them, and hold them tightly. And may God bless all of you for what you do for this city. And bless so the Stephen Police Mayor. Department. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm take up some pictures here for the paper. Everybody, I'd like everybody to come down and get on mine. While we're getting all seated here, I have a an impromptu. Do we have a motion on something tonight on the physical plan of this building? A recommendation to remove these. Yeah, you got a motion. We have a we have a recommendation that on council I had a unanimous decision to remove these things. Mr. City Administrator, Manager. Second. Yes. 
That's not, that's not an actual. It's not item. on the agenda. It's not an item. It's just, it's just, it was, yeah. as well as a prompt, they yeah. just take a little bit of freedom on that one. Okay. Up to you, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Item number two, uh, recognition of donation by the Rotary Club for improvements to the Collins Street Trailhead. And I think, who is it that has that? There you are, but who else is there? Who brought that check up originally? There you go. Come on up. Dear Mayor and Councilors, for some historical context, in the fall of 2018, the city began creating a master plan for an inclusive space that brought together our Bosque River Trail, beautiful live oaks, and one of the most scenic parts of the city to create an escape. The preliminary plan created an environment for all, from pollinator and sensory gardens to a playscape fully inclusive to people of all abilities. We now know that the plan to build the all-inclusive playground has been moved to the main city park. In July of 2019, mm -hmm. over 100 Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, also known as RILA, teen campers came out to begin the process of clearing the area and creating a brick trail loop for the future playscape site at the Collins Street Trailhead on the Bosque River Trail. The Rylarians, as they're called, cleaned hundreds of 111-year-old Thurber bricks pulled from our streets, thinned trees and underbrush, and assisted with the pad site for the intended future playscape and butterfly garden. In the fall of 2019, the city had water run to the site, and the local master gardeners donated the plant material to plant the pollinator garden. Even if the all-inclusive playground is moving to the city park, we are still hoping that the city will continue its previous intention to create a sensory garden at the Collins Street Trailhead. The garden will pr provide an opportunity to experience the space with all of your senses, with tactile, olfactory, visual, and auditory experiences. We will be able to reach a wide range of community members from children to portions of our community impacted by dementia. In fact, horticulture therapy has been proven to assist in the calming and recollection of patients. <clears throat> Last year, sadly, due to the pandemic, RILA was canceled and we couldn't contribute to the progress of the park construction physically, but that didn't keep our local Rotary Club from donating another $3,000 to the city. Happily, this coming summer, 100 more RILA campers will participate in their service project on Saturday, June 19, all day, on the Collins Street Trailhead again. As a sign of our continued commitment to the Collins Street Trailhead Park effort, I, Momen Kazi, as president of the local Rotary Club, and I'm represented here also by Rosemary Nagel and Ron Henry, we would like to present the city another $3,000, totaling $9,000 in the last three years during which Rotary as a local service club has donated time, landscaping blueprints, and over 1,000 man hours. Please accept this ceremonial check of $9,000 representing that commitment. And we're very happy that the city is planning to use this year's $3,000 to purchase a water bottle filling station for the Collins Street Trailhead. We hope that the city sees by these efforts that Rotary cares about Stephenville's uh, general health and well-being. And we hope that everyone in, around, in and around Stephenville can get out and enjoy nature at its finest at the Collins Street Trailhead on the Bosque River Trail. Thank you very much. dry erase marker so <laughs> thank you sir we appreciate the rotary club and the commitment to the trailhead we appreciate that very much okay next item mr city manager would you <clears throat> discuss item number three uh mr mayor members of the council jimmy chu our fire chief is here to present this okay i'm item. sorry i thought it was gonna be all right come on jimmy <clears throat> now how many years have you worked for us now do what? How many years have you worked here again? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, 
Forty what? Forty-two, I think. Forty-two. Okay. That's as long as many people in this room are. Uh, we, uh, we've had uh, the, the uh, vaccination center going for several months now, and uh, we've had some part-time employees working out there. And uh, I was asked a little over a month ago to see about uh, increasing the pay for, for a couple of positions out there for a nurse that oversees the thing and one of our pharmacists that stays out there and oversees the mixing. We're kind of getting to a point where uh, it is, we may be a little late on this, but I would ask that y'all increase this uh, to $25 because I think it would help us keep somebody out there. And these are two really important positions. And uh, uh, these people have donated a tremendous amount of time. And, and uh, I'll answer any questions about you. Any questions for? I think you have about 30 days left. Uh, we're planning on it. It depends on what happens this week. If we if we get a lot of first shots, you know, we may make different plans. But for right now, we're in, we're anticipating shutting down the first week in June, which that will everybody that's got a shot out here will have an opportunity to get their second shots out here too. So, anybody else? I can tell you from Austin, I've heard stories about how well we did out there, how the, the program that vaccination center how we all have organized it and stuff i mean it's, it's been a it's a model for the rest of the state well all the credit goes to some guys we put out there and I absolutely really appreciate it. pass that word on to us I will. Do, do i hear a motion so move second, second. I have a motion is second the import of the discussion proceed of it all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. same sign opposed Motion motion passes thank you very much appreciate it <clears throat> next time is tax increment finance re reinvestment zone you know, I don't like that term, <laughs> but anyway, it's it, it's a good program. So anyway, we're going to enter into a public hearing for an ordinance for the city of Stephenville City Council and Texas amending the ordinance 2019-020 concerning tax increment reinvestment zone number one, city of Stephenville, Texas established pursuant to chapter 311 of the Texas tax code by expanding the boundary of the tax increment financing reinvestment zone number one, city of Stephenville, Texas. And I, who we're going to have speak? Natalie? For y'all to know, this is a very smart woman. <laughs> I'm here, right? That's there you go. Sign number one. That's sign number one. Mayor and Council, thank you for having me today. My name is Natalie Moore with David Pettit Economic Development based out of Fort Worth. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak to you about your TERS <coughs> number one. And we are considering today um, a boundary amendment. Next slide, please. So to give you a little bit of background, um, this TERS was established in 2019 and it was designated as TERS number one. On the map here, you can see that TERS number one boundary is approximately um, 30 acres outlined here in red, just north of West Washington Street. Subsequently, on July 23rd, 2019, we expanded the boundaries to include TERS 1A. <coughs> Um, is what we designated it. It's still all considered the same TERS. That's a discussion that we had, um, David and I had come and spoken to you about the pros and cons of either um, expanding the existing TERS or creating different TERS. So even though these each have a different label, they are still all considered TERS number one. Um, in 2020, we expanded it to include TERS 1B, which is outlined here in purple. You can see it, it goes north and south along Harbin Road. Now what we are um, proposing today is TERS 1C. You can see that outlined in green. It's a little bit hard to see on the screen, but it's south of West Washington Street. It is a contiguous parcel. Um, it looks like maybe it could be two different um, pieces, but it is all one contiguous parcel that you can see um, on the following slide in a little bit more detail. I do wanna note that the term is 25 years um, for all of the different portions. No matter when it was expanded, we're still holding the term um, constant. So all of that would um, expire December 31st of 2045. Next slide, please. You can see here a little bit more clearly at south of West Washington Street, there's a portion um, that will show you a site plan in a moment here that um, has some retail on the, the frontage part of West Washington Street and then the south of the railroad. Um, I'll talk about in a little bit what we worked really closely with Mr. Barnes about the potential for the southern part of TERS 1C for single family uh, residential development in the future. Um, you can see also a big part of why these boundaries were chosen is the potential to extend 
Lockhart Road. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more on the next slide. So this is that northern portion that kind of um, fronts West Washington Street. There's some retail that is already planned for that area. So that's a great time to um, include land within the TERS before that increment has been generated. So by establishing the TERS this year, the base value of the TERS is set for 20, as of the value um, January 1st, 2021 of this year. So whatever the value was, which the value of all um, 549 acres was about $12 million. And um, we are projecting quite a bit of retail um, to be built on that northern portion. Next slide, please. So you can see here um, the development assumptions that David Pettit and I worked on the model to figure out what does the development mean in terms of taxable value. What we did is we called it TERS 1. C phase one, phase two, and phase three. You can see phase one <clears throat> and phase two are really heavily retail based. That's because we think that there's quite a bit of potential along with Washington Street for an increased retail presence given um, the growth, frankly, that your, your community is seeing. So phase one um, was that site plan that we looked at just now. It's about 28,000 square feet of retail. Um, that we project to be coming online between 2022 and 2023. Uh, what you might notice here is that the incremental value of that retail is, is significant, but it's just under $4 million. What's truly significant is the potential for incremental sales. So obviously right now that land is undeveloped, but we're pr projecting that the annual sales could be close to $24 million just from that one portion of TERS 1C. Um, phase two of TERS 1C, it's not uh, site planned out yet, but just given the um, floor area ratios that are consistent with the phase one, we projected that it could potentially see an additional 31,000 square feet of retail and an additional $14 million worth of um, annual sales. Now, what's really interesting to me is the potential for that single family um, residential development on the southern portion, which we're calling phase three. Um, we saw the potential working with um, various single family residential developers. Uh, David took quite a bit of time working with our single family contacts that we know that are developing a lot of properties um, throughout North Texas. And um, based on the demand that we see in Stephenville, we do not think that the lot sizes here will be as dense as some of the um, lot sizes that we're seeing um, kind of closer to the main part of DFW, we think that the demographics here in Stephenville would call for a little bit bigger of a lot size than you might see up there. And again, these are just projections as to what we think is um, in line with the market. But we saw that there's a potential for 1,500 homes. Um, based on, you can see here, the different lots, anywhere from $225,000 uh, $225, of taxable value to two seventy five, dollars which we think is very conservative. Um, you could potentially see over $400 million worth of single family homes being built on, on that acreage that we're calling um, phase three. So next slide. To amend the TERS, again, we're not creating a new TERS, we're just expanding the boundaries. It's very similar to the same steps. There's a, an amendment to the creation ordinance and then there's an amended TERS project and financing plan which we have prepared today for your consideration. The amended creation ordinance establishes five key elements, the boundary, the term, again, the term is not changing, the TERS board, again, we're not proposing to um, change the composition of the TERS board, the city participation, and then that preliminary amended project and financing plan. After the creation ordinance amendment, the amended project and financing plan is approved by the board or is considered for approval by the board, and then the city council would need to approve it by separate ordinance. Um, I love how efficient your city is. All three of those steps are on the um, agenda for today. So first you have the public hearing, then you have the uh, consideration of the amended creation ordinance, the amendment to the creation ordinance, excuse me, then we'll recess into the TERS board meeting for the TERS board to consider the amended project and financing plan. We'll go back into the city council session for the city council to consider the final project, final amended project and financing plan. So next slide, please. One thing I do want to point out is that even though this is all one TERS, each of the um, expanded boundaries have different participation levels. So TERS number one, number 1A, and 1B 
the city of Stephenville is contributing 100% of its real property increment and 100% of the sales tax increment. That was set in the previous ordinances that you have considered. Um, CETA is contributing 100% of its sales tax increment within the original boundaries, TERS number one. That's set by a separate interlocal agreement that was already approved and passed. Today, what we're considering in the uh, amendment to the creation ordinance is that the city of Stephenville would contribute 35% of its real property increment and 50% of the sales tax increment within the boundaries of TERS 1C. So those expanded boundaries in the green along West Washington and south of the railroad, that would have a participation level of 35% of the real property increment and 50% of the sales. So you went really hard in on the, those first kind of expand um, boundaries and now you're taking a little bit more of a conservative approach, which I think is wise. Next slide, please. So what does that mean? What does the potential TERS revenue taking into account the different participation um, levels within the different boundaries? You, uh, the city of Stephenville would participate at approximately $36.5 million and CETA continues to participate at just under $2 million. Just to let you know, previously, before expanding it to, um, to include this expansion, the participation was at 24 million. So you're increasing the participation by approximately 14 million, still over that 25 year term. Next slide, please. Again, uh, we continue to offer you this menu of eligible project costs. What this means is this is everything that's al allowed by statute that the TERS revenue could be potentially spent um, on. It's important to note that this will always be a two-step process. The a developer would have to come before the TERS board and ask, as David would say, a mother, may I, may I please have some of this TERS money? The TERS board has the right to say yes or no and designate that money out of one of these eligible project cost categories, and then it would have to go before city council. So you get to look at it actually twice before any of the money gets dispersed from the TERS fund just allows you quite a bit of flexibility in terms of which projects you want to support. Next slide, please. So again, those next steps are the public hearing that we're in right now, and then consideration of the amendment to the creation ordinance. Then we would need to recess into the TIF board meeting. Thank you. Um, and then go back into the city council um, for consideration of the final amended project and financing plan. And Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Yes. So, We've talked about this before, Natalie. So at what point does the criteria develop to in such a way that we're looking to quit amending number one and creating number two? I, I, my personal opinion on it is that um, it really has to do with how many projects you have in the pipeline and how many projects you want to, how much of your money is already tied up and the urgency of the money that you would need for another project. So if you had something, if you get, if this TIF matures in such a way that you have, for example, in Fort Worth, we are working on a TIF project right now that there might be five projects ahead of us. So be before our project can get paid, those other projects have to get paid. So if you have a, a project that merits a TIF on its own and you're willing to dedicate money to it in the short term, okay. I think that might be a reason. Yep. Another thing that I see value in is when you use a TERS for placemaking and like a sense of place and just a real true district. So if you were going to create a TERS over just your downtown, I think it would make sense to have a downtown TERS because that's, you know, the mission of that TERS is very um, specific to creating a sense of place in your downtown. We see that in Fort Worth um, in, in the downtown district, but also in the near south side in that Magnolia kind of um, area so when it when you're trying to create a sense of place it makes sense to me to not have you know ters sections in all different parts of the city thank you anybody else what well, um so from a projection standpoint <clears throat> where do those come from and tell us a little bit about that yeah so the so ters and i we've actually taken a pretty conservative approach with your ters because we projected on ters one the original boundaries based off of a site plan. So a developer, I think, is you know working on that project right now. They knew what they were going to build. So the projections are really based on um, what the developer is saying that they're going to build. And then what we do is we take, um, we go into Erath County Appraisal District and we say, OK, what is a retail <coughs> building worth on the tax rolls in Erath County? 
Um, and what that tells us is that's what the tax revenue is going to be based on, not necessarily what the developer is paying for, because sometimes developers will say, oh, we're going to spend $30 million on that Chick-fil-A. And you're like, well, that's all well and good, but it's only going to show up on the tax rolls at $1 million, so you, not, you don't want to base your tax revenue projections on what the developer is going to pay. Um, we did not project anything, any development for TERS 1A or TERS 1B. Now, there could be something that would come there, but we're not projecting anything because there's no known development activity. For TERS 1C, um, what we called phase one, again, we took what the site plan is from the developer, so using our known inputs as to what the developer is ready to build <coughs> and doing that same exercise as to what the taxable value will be. TERS 1C um, phase two, we did do some extrapolating there to say, okay, based on the um, floor area ratios, which means like if you have a certain plot of land, how much of the how big of a building would you put on that piece of property? Um, and how much of the floor area would you utilize for vertical improvements, taking into account like parking lot, right? So you're not gonna just take an, an acre lot and build on the whole thing. So we kept those floor area ratios, which do vary you know, by area. Some areas are denser and they don't have as much parking. Um, so we tried to be consistent with what you see in Stephenville. So that's what we did for phase one, TERS 1C phase two. For the single family, again, um, David met with several um, single family developers, which I know um, the mayor has asked us to bring into Stephenville, so we're, we're setting up meetings for them to come. Um, but we use their projections um, as to kind of do a gut check and say, what do you think, how, what would the absorption be like in the city of Stephenville? How quickly do you think we could sell these lots? What's the time period to build a house, right? So first you have to put in the horizontal infrastructure. So we took all that into account. Um, we are seeing a lot of single family TERS activity throughout Texas, um, particularly in Kaufman County. So some of these kind of outlying areas, um, just because of the cost to build a house in you know, North Texas proper is getting so outlandish that we're seeing a lot of activity. So we had quite a bit of comps and absorption schedules to use from our own kind of pro other projects that we're working on. On the projections, what's the, so what was the timeline, 2034, you thought that that would begin that process of the phase two? Um, let's is see. that right? That's a good question. That I would have to double check. That's right. So. Now, I'm not quite sure, I would have to t double check, but there was a period of time, it wasn't all in 2034. <coughs> so the way that so the model worked, no. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just like 150 <laughs> houses, three, it wasn't 1,500 houses hit the tax rolls in 2034. Uh, okay. It was rolled into it, okay. right? And so um, that's something that is a little bit misleading, I guess, about this table is that it wasn't just all of those houses hit in 2034. Right. If I had to guess, I think we, we put a 10-year absorption. Okay. So, and if you think about a 10-year absorption, so 2024, right. when would they have to sell the property and start the, you know, so we were backing into it, sure. all that. Great, that's, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I got one more, sir. Yes, sir. Back to the retail, Natalie. Yes, so sir. when you're projecting that out and you're using uh, dollar amount per square foot I assume mm -hmm. are those numbers that you're getting from Stephenville today or is that a larger number a statewide number Steve we try to do it local so okay. Stephenville so especially for the um, the taxable value of the real property that's local to your county for sure if not your city your county because count the sales county. the retail sales those tend to be a little bit more generalized okay. um, and I, I if I can't recall, we I think we might have worked with CETA to get a lot of that data. So they were the ones okay. that helped us provide that to get it, um, you know, to see what the developers were projecting that was going to be occurring in this particular development. Anybody else? Thank you. <coughs> Mayor, is yes, all sir. of that 1C in the city limits? Yes, sir. It, it, okay. Yes, we did. Other questions? You know, our, our city population is now 23,000 what, Alan? I'm sorry? City population is now 23,000? 23,110. 110. That's just going to go up. <coughs> it's going to grow even faster. Tarleton projects another 5,000 or 3,000 students in the next three years. Or 3,000 students in the next five years. And so Stephenville is going to grow. We're going to need more housing. Uh, we've had 
both Stedco and CETA has been approached and the city has been approached with from uh, industry here in town that says we need more single family housing. Mm -hmm. We've had some requests even back to the day when Kenny was mayor looking at, you know, the P and Z and looking at what kind of structures we build, the size, the size of lots, et cetera. So we're going to be looking at all that in the future. So we appreciate the hard work. Brandon, I appreciate you taking the lead on this project uh, and being the development part of the city council. So I appreciate that. If there's no other questions. One the, question. Okay. Yes, sir. If you don't mind, Mayor. Uh, with regard to the participation <laughs> uh, percentages that you've got, uh, the 35% on the property tax and the 50% on the sales tax. Uh, once this is approved, are those set in stone or can they change? They can be um, changed by a, an, another ordinance, by okay. an amendment to the creation ordinance. All right. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? I do say that there is a meeting tomorrow. Some of us, I'm taking a few folks with us to forward to talk to the developer, uh, an additional developer besides the ones you've talked to so far oh, that you're going to bring here. So we're looking at bringing some housing to Stephenville, Texas, which would be good for uh, citizens and for uh, the city as far as tax rolls are concerned. And for those who don't know, Harbin Drive is being funded through a mm -hmm. TERS. Oh, I hate that word. <laughs> anyway, the funding from that is coming, is being paid for. So that's not a citizen, that's not a a citizen burden by doing that and if you'll some of the projections that uh, you made for the first hers as an example uh, that was projected at I think 25 million dollars of retail sales and I remember speaking to the the owner of that project and his comment was if we only sell 25 million bucks I'll probably get fired and so there may be 40 or 50 million dollars sold in that project in the next <coughs> per year in the next few years. Mm -hmm. Steamwell's becoming a hub and that's what this is all about and it's a way of funding infrastructure and needs for the growth of Steamwell Tech. So I appreciate your work as well. So if we have no more um, comments from you or anybody questions, then I'm going to we're in a public hearing so I'm going to ask if anybody wants to come speak uh, about the TERS. Don't don't go too far. Well, well I'm sure you'll be back. <laughs> Anybody want to speak in opposition to the request tonight? We'll close the public hearing. I'll consider approval of an ordinance amending ordinance 2019-020. So moved, sir. <clears throat> so Second. Motion Second. by Mark. You second that? Justin. Who? Justin. 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 Okay. Any other further discussion or questions? We'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. And with that, we're going to recess the city council meeting. Uh, and enter into a uh, tax increment reinvestment zoning board. We have two members of CETA who participate in our, our membership. You want to take Stacy's place? Mark, if you'll, I mean, Alan, if you'll give him your space, we'll take that as our next title. <clears throat> Chris is the pre or chair or president of the board of CETA, and so we appreciate your willingness to come up here like that on Thank spot you. notice like that. You've done that for us several times. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to call the call to order of the tax increment reinvestment zone board. You see us up here tonight, and consider approval of an amendment amended project and financing plan for tax increment reinvestment zone number one. I hear a motion or discussion. I hear a motion. Also move, Mayor. I'll second. Okay. So Chris makes the motion, and Mark seconds it. Any discussion? You're here. Well, let's. Ms. Cole, we'll let you have some comments. I mean, this is the first time you've had to be here. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I appreciate that. All right, no other discussion. Then we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. We have now the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zoning Board has approved the motion. We're going to reconvene. Thank you all very much for coming for such a short meeting like this. It's, <laughs> it's real important. We It's part of the process that we have these people come and, and give us outside in, input. Thank you very much, Chris. Marion, thank you for your work. We're going to reconvene the regular city council meeting now. It is 6.09, and we'll consider approval of an ordinance approving an amending project financing plan for tax increment reinvestment zone number one City of Steamville, Texas, established pursuant to Chapter 311 of the Texas Tax Code. So moved. Have a motion by Mark. Second. Gerald, is that you? Let me write this down. Any discussion, any questions for Natalie? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Uh, we have approved the ordinance, approving the amendment. Thank you very much. And Natalie, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, now we get into the Russell City Council meeting, Mr. Keelan, Planning and Zoning Commission. <clears throat> Afternoon, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> Case number uh, RZ2021-007 is applicant Jason Sample, as authorized by Brandon McDonald. Uh, Mr. Sample is requesting the rezone of a property located at 1955 West South Loop, which is parcel 31852 of the Greenview Edition, Block 2, Lot 1 of the City of Stephenville, Erath County, Texas, from B1 to Industrial. The current zoning for this property is neighborhood business with future land use as, uh, being commercial. The intended project is for a uh, personal service business, retail business, uh, offering tattoos for its clientele. Uh, the current zoning does not list this type of business as a permitted use, hence the request to rezone to industrial. On April 21, 2021, the Planning and Zoning Commission convened and recommended <coughs> the City Council deny the rezoning request. The, revo the vote was five to one. I'd be glad to answer any questions. <coughs> any questions for Steve? Steve, was part of the discussion at that meeting that night the future zoning use and, and the potential spot zoning for that particular parcel? Yes, sir. The, the commission uh, expressed some concern during their discussion about the change to industrial zoning in this one particular area. And if you look at the uh, future zoning map, you see there's some B1 zoning uh, along Washington, but just directly north to that is all R1 residential. So there was con concern about changing this to industrial, uh, not so much for the, the requested use of a tattoo shop, but because of what the industrial zoning could allow uh, should this shop not be present in the future and it transitioned into another use. So uh, there was some concern there and then discussion about maybe revisiting what those uh, permitted uses are uh, for B1, B2 and see if we can maybe uh, reconsider this at a future date for this particular location. Okay. Other questions? Okay, we're in a public hearing and we do have two folks that want to come speak tonight. So Mr. Brandon McDonald, <coughs> would you come up here to the mic, give your name and address. And because we're in a public hearing, we need to know you're for or against. Are you speaking opposition or in favor of? I'm in favor of. Okay. I'm Brandon McDonald, and my address is 10169 West State Highway 6, Dublin. Okay, Jason Sample approached me about renting 1954 West South Loop for his business, Artistic Realm. Um, I own Good to See You Texting LLC, which owns 1955 West South Loop, um, and also across the road, 1954 West South Loop. So I'm invested in the neighborhood. Um, I'm interested in renting to Artistic Realm because I know he'll pay the rent, take care of my property, and he runs a successful and reputable business. Because zoning would not allow that, we requested the rezone to industrial and it was denied by PNZ. Um, but it opens up a bigger concern. Why are tattoo shops only allowed in property zoned industrial? The zoning seems outdated and unfair. I'm here to request that the council consider updating the zoning ordinance. Thank you. I'll pass that on as a, re a request to the PNZ. If I guess that'd be Steve or Steve. He's right there. Okay. I'm sorry. He's hidden behind the pot putting there. He'll take that back to PNZ and bring some recommendations. Brandon, would you work with him on that? Yep. Thank you very much. All right. We have one more person who'd like to speak. Um, that's Jason Sample. Would you give your name, your look, where, you're, where you live, and are you for or against the request? Um, my name is Jason Sample. I live at 386 West Sloan Street. I am for the rezone. Um, <clears throat> they were concerned mainly in the zoning meeting that it was a fly-by-night business and not an established business that wouldn't be there in two years. Um, none of the residents around this location disputed the rezone request, and I have 100% on our side for the landowner, um, for this to be the, per the permanent and future home of my business. If it does not get rezoned, I am asking if we can do a conditional use permit as uh, Glen uh, Glenrose, Granbury, and Weatherford does. 
because most of their tattoo shops are in commercial. And I should have asked, is there anybody have any questions for Jason? Let me back up, Megan. Anybody have any questions for Brandon? Apologize for not asking that earlier. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we're public, still in public hearing, so I'm going to ask, is there anybody else that would like to come and speak in favor of the request? Hearing none, we'll go to anybody who wants to speak in opposition to the request. Hearing none, we're going to uh, close the public hearing and we'll consider approval of an ordinance rezoning the property located at 1955 West South Loop, parcel number R31852, <laughs> being block two of, lo of the lot of the Greenview Edition of the City of Stephenville, Texas, from Neighborhood Business District to Industrial. Do I have a motion? Mayor, make a motion to deny the request. Okay, okay. Let, me, let me ask a question here. Technical. <clears throat> Since the PNZ has said no, do we have to say no as well, or do we just no. have to infer? We, we, a motion, no motion would be the same as denying you can, it. You can do either, either way. way. Okay. You so you want to make the motion or just let it? Okay, we'll just do it that way. Ricky has a motion that we deny the request. Do I hear a second? Second. Who was that? Alan? Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, can uh, I? Mr. Just, Mayor, I will say. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I don't think industrial is the right, <coughs> the right zoning for this particular lot because of that concern of what has it become 10 years from now or 25 years from now or whenever. Um, so, so that's not the solution to this, but I do agree that we need to look at our zoning ordinances and, and update that. And I would like to see planning and zoning maybe bring us a, a handful of, of, of things that they think we need to. Uh, to look at, not just specific to this, but I'm sure there's a lot more that needs to be updated. So I'd like to see that happen okay. fairly I, quickly, um, and especially so that possibly we could make this still work for these guys. Well, I asked Brandon to look at that already, and so he's agreed to do that previous. I mean, prior to this commission, uh, this council meeting too. So I appreciate him doing that. Mark, you had a question. My question was along the same line, sir. Okay, so all right, and I'll just make a statement that I've already spoken with the chairwoman of that and several members of PNZ after that meeting that said that that's something they would like to look at. So I've talked with Steve that's something our committee is going to push forward and hopefully bring something back soon um, so that uh, with with the conditional use program that they have, you can, you can determine hours, you can determine things like that. So a place <coughs> is closed by 9 a.m. that that addresses all the concerns of the citizens around it, but uh, still allows business to uh, prosper in our community. So we will hop on that quickly. Addressing Ricky's concern, uh, do you have any idea, without pinning down to a day, six weeks, four weeks, we can have that answer? And I'm sure these people want to know what's, what's going to happen. As quick as possible. There you go. All right, I got you. Mayor, Thank I think there are several other areas in our zoning that probably need to be considered at the same time, and that may delay the process if we want to pick one specific one and deal with it or if we want to look at a number of them but i know there are a number of others that probably need to be considered also well i, I agree with that i'm going to, what, I'm going to what, let brandon bring them make that run what, what we've decision. talked about is is kind of what ricky talked about not just tearing it completely up but maybe bringing five at a time and just work our way through that so that we can analyze that appropriately um, and and make those more modern so. i appreciate that any further discussion or questions here now we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. So the motion is to deny, which has been upheld by the city council, so it's denied. But we're going to bring this back to PNZ, and Brandon will help get that done with, with Stephen so we can address your issue. <coughs> Thank you very much. Next item. Case SV 2021-004, applicant Clint McKeehan. Representing Wellington State Bank is requesting a subdivision waiver from section 155.6.04 M1 for cur curb and gutter for the property located at 2895 Northwest Loop, parcel 76370, block 155, which is part of lot 17 of the city addition to the city of Stephenville, Erath County, Texas. The current zoning is neighborhood business with future land use being office and neighborhood. The project for Wellington State Bank is in early stages of vertical construction. Mr. McKeehan stated that the bank fully intends to construct the improvements on the forest uh, <coughs> side of the project, uh, but the request is simply for the uh, improvements along the Northwest Loop. The Planning and Zoning Commission convened on April 21, 2021, and by unanimous vote, 
of six to zero recommend the C recommended the city council approve the waiver request. Any discussion at questions for Steve? Steve on the Forest Hill roadside, the uh, curb and gutter and sidewalks are both being put in. Yes, sir. The developer has agreed to install and, those. And what about? So I know that um, there was another parcel several months ago on Forest Hill Road, and um, the concern was where the curb would go exactly is the is the company going to pay for the backfill and will the curb go to where the road is today or will the curb go where we have the setback or the uh the right of way so on forest i think we have some pretty defined uh, right of ways there and i'm not recalling the previous case um, there's a house just on the north end up there right by the city limits Okay, North. So the in our discussions and in the civil plan review, I believe we have the sidewalk sidewalk curb and gutter identified, and and that's already been determined. And looking over at Mr. Williams, he's uh, agreeing with me that we have that already determined in that plan review process. So the the location of the of those improvements. Um, we're fully aware of okay and it's going to be along the road or where the right of way is uh along the the road i believe back of curb so there'll be pavement up to it i think that's what you're asking yeah is it is it so there's pavement will it be where the road exists today or where the right of way is where the right of way is okay okay and we did change the type of road that is so it's narrower now was that already done by ordinance or did y'all just come up with a plan Take care of it. Okay, it's handled. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, we're going to enter into a public hearing on case number SV 2021 004. Anybody want to speak in favor of the request? Hearing none, does anybody want to speak in opposition to the request? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing and we'll consider approval of a waiver from City of Stephenville Court of Ordinance Section 155.6.04 M1. Urban gutters. Did I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the waiver as presented. I'll second. Okay. Have a motion and a second. Was that you, Mark? And Brady made the motion. Any further discussion? What was the motion, Mayor? I'm sorry, I can't hear anything. To approve. I'll tear mine down. So <laughs> I understand. It was to approve the request that was passed through PNZ to allow the waiver. The waiver. Yes. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Is that correct? Is that what is? Okay. Any other discussion? It, it concerns me, and then PNC had a similar discussion when we start granting these waivers in areas that are undeveloped, and there's nothing on either side of this developed yet. When we start granting these waivers, okay, this one gets a waiver. The next property to develop is going to come and ask for the same thing, and the next property is going to ask for the same thing. So you're not ever going to have curb and gutter there, and you're not ever going to have the sidewalks there either, which is what we have said as a council that we wanted to protect our pavement. We wanted the curb and gutter, and, and for the safety of pedestrian traffic when they're interacting with vehicular traffic, we want the sidewalks. And, and this is another one of those cases. There's nothing there now, but if we don't start now and get it in the first one, then none of the rest of them are going to follow suit because they're all going to point back to this one. You're setting a precedent for that area if you agree with the waiver on this. Well, as Mark brought up, and we've had about three of these in the last year, I guess, and we've made a commitment to go through and look yeah. at all of that citywide so we don't, it's not a waiver so much, but we address the whole issue going forward. So we'll need to do that. You're right. Any well, other discussions? Well, and this is on the highway. state highway side. And so how does something like Washington Street happen where it's curved and gutter? Was that something that the city put in, or? I don't know. No, sir. Okay. Um, they go all the, but once it gets to their full right of way, then. Uh, normally, I think so. I. I okay. Yeah. It's. This is not a. This is not a, a state maintained or a city maintained. Correct, but they fall within our ordinances, though. Yeah. <clears throat> right. It still falls within our ordinance because no, it's no, within I'm not, the. City. I'm not disputing that it's not in the ordinance. Yeah. I'm just saying. But you're right, state highway, not our highway. Okay, we're going to proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign, opposed? No. No. So who was the other no, Gerald?
Motion passes. Thank you. Item number 13. Case number SV 2021-005, applicant <coughs> Clint McKeehan. Uh, basically, this is the same case, sir, uh, with uh, this time only applying to the sidewalk. Applicant Clint McKeehan, representing <coughs> Wellington State Bank, is requesting a subdivision waiver from section 155.6.11, sidewalk requirements for the property located at 2895 Northwest Loop, parcel 76370 which is block 155, lot 17 of the city addition to the city of Stephenville, Urath County. Current zoning is B1 neighborhood business with future land use of office and neighborhood. Uh, again, the project is in early stages of vertical, vertical construction and Mr. McKeehan has, uh, in, in, has stated his intentions of constructing the improvements on forest. And this waiver is for the consideration of, of the frontage along the Northwest Loop. Uh, on April 21, the Planning and Zoning Commission convened and by unanimous, I'm sorry, this uh, correction here, by a vote of three to two, recommended the City Council approve the waiver request. Okay. I'm going to make just make a recommendation to jump in here just a second. Alan and Nick, would you all get with the Highway Department and ask about what the future plans are for that street? Certainly. I'll get that and bring it back to Council meeting, despite what we do here in a minute. Okay, we'll enter in a public hearing. Or wait a minute, does anybody have any questions for Steve? Right now we'll enter into a public hearing. Anybody want to come speak in favor of the request? Yes, sir. Come up here and state your name and address. Tell us you're for or against the request. I'm Clint McKeehan. Uh, my address is 1102 West Hyman, Stephenville, Texas. Um, I'm speaking uh, for the waiver. Um, the, the main reason, guys, we're, we're asking for this waiver on, on Northwest Loop and not on Forest is that right away the where the bar ditch drops off there it drops off quickly you're going to have to build up it's to put a sidewalk or curb and gutter there uh, but especially sidewalk there in that right away um our I, th I thought she was going to be here tonight she's not but our civil engineer was also concerned that if you do those things you're going to hold water in the roadway uh, on long northwest loop it's not the most efficient drainage into the, the the drainage that's along Northwest Loop uh, to get it off the street as quickly as possible. So uh, it, it's not just that hey we don't want to spend the money. That's that's not it. Um, it's it's more more than anything. It's about the placement, uh, especially the the curb and gutter and sidewalk in that in that right of way. Okay. You have any questions? Where do they? Where where is the sidewalk going to go then? Relative to the road or the right of way, the sidewalk on Forest or the uh, I'm sorry, I was on the highway. On the highway. Well, according to uh, Mr. McKeehan's project manager, this sidewalk would be well up on to the property, um, quite a bit of distance from. Well, I, uh, thought they, I thought they had it drawn right on the in that right way. Did they not? Maybe I'm maybe I'm mis maybe I misspoke. Well, Mr. Mr. Pack. Uh, stated that the because of the the drainage and the bar ditch <coughs> along uh, the northwest loop there's about an eight foot gradient dis difference and the placement of the sidewalk where it was illustrated would have presented a, uh, quite a few problems on the development side so he was saying the sidewalk would really have to be put further up onto the property which would basically uh, mean that the sidewalk was up uh, near uh, your parking lot is what I recall him testifying uh, the actual improvement was never really uh, illustrated on the civil plans uh, during the review process because we knew that we were coming for this consideration. If this is not passed, then we're going to go back and, and work with uh, Mr. McKeehan to have those placed on the civil plan set. Any questions? Is that, the other, I guess the other question is, Steve, on, on this, is that uh, is the option to pay a certain percentage of the cost of the sidewalk and is that a is that an option in this scenario yes sir by council action uh, we do have an ordinance now that allows a percentage of these improvements to be paid it's actually 25 percent uh, through a minor waiver process at the staff approval level uh, however in this case uh, mr mckeehan uh, opted to go to pnz to present his case uh, the ordinance does not require that an applicant go through the minor waiver process. It's an option to either go minor waiver or major waiver 
major waiver being before PNC. Any questions? Okay, we're in a public hearing. Anybody else want to come speak in favor of the project or request? You want to speak in opposition? Here now we'll close this public hearing and we'll consider approval of a waiver from the City of Steve Okota <coughs> Ordinance of Section 1556.11 sidewalks for a property located at 2895 Northwest Loop. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion to approve as presented. Brandon makes a motion. Do I hear a second? Phil here is second, so the motion, there's no motion to vote on. Is that correct? That's right. So therefore, the request is denied because of that. That's request right. for the waiver. Yes, sir. Okay, so the request is denied because there's no, for failure of second. Steve, next item, number 15. I want to say thank you, though, for building property here in Steamville, Texas. That's, we're going to, we'll take every tax dollar you can give us. <laughs> and it's a good business that you're working on up there. Thank well, you, we sir. We appreciate the city and their efforts and, and everything has been done uh, on our behalf through this whole process. And I do I believe that the city's going to work with you on that other participation as well on the sidewalk. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Yes, yeah. sir. Because PNZ yes. approved, voted to approve it, if there's no other motion, that means their motion moved forward. Is that correct? It that failed because, there, because that motion didn't have a second. So it just failed. Didn't have that, that you don't have to vote on denying it. In they effect. approved it. Done. But they, they approved, approved it. it. They approved it's it. It's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Right. So it doesn't we're, carry But we require you're not You're not bound by P and Z, anything that they do. This is a new, if you take that for like a new matter, you're, I think, thinking about the way the rules used to be where we had to uh, have certain votes if they denied it. Right. Not in this case. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thanks, sir. Item number 15. Yes, sir. PD 2020-003, 004, and 005. Uh, this is for the consideration of a development schedule and extension for Steve Emmons, uh, applicant for the above referenced plan development and representing Spectra Student Living. And this extension request is pursuant to 154.08 of the zoning code. Um, Mr. Emmons, you just made it in, matter of fact, uh, caught a flight in tonight and, and uh, said he would be here by 6.30 and it worked out just right. So he is here to provide an update on his plan development located in the 20, uh, 2200 block of Tarleton. Although this update is uh, prior to the one year anniversary of the PD approval, I uh, just want to re remind you that the PD was approved with a condition that the infrastructure for the single family portion of this PD would be completed by April 1st uh, with some delays associated with weather plan reviews and then supplies uh, getting supplies to the site. Uh, we missed that April 1 deadline just just by a little uh, but we currently have a, Mr. Emmons has equipment on site now and those those improvements are underway so um, he has requested a two-month extension, or I'm sorry, bumping it back to July 1st is what he is requesting. And I just want to make sure that we understand, I want to be clear on this, that the discussion from PNZ was strictly related to the single-family extension related to the PD and not necessarily the overall development schedule for the PD. So the uh, quest is to extend the PD portion for a single family portion to July 1st. Yes, sir. That condition specifically stated by April uh, for okay. the single family uh, infrastructure completion. And that's that's what the uh, update to PNZ was regarding. Okay, any questions for Steve? Here now we'll open a public, there are? I thought I heard someone say something. Uh, it's one of the reasons we're gonna get rid of these things, right, Brady? Ready to. All right, we're gonna enter into public hearing. I may want to speak in favor of the request. Come on up. And tell us what's going on. I remember when you came last time, we gave you a hard time. You did. Get ready. All right. Hi, Steve. I'm Inspector of Student Living. Uh, the project's going well, and we just, between COVID and weather and um, going back and forth, uh, we want to do some extra things on the stormwater uh, issue that's in the neighborhood. It just took us longer to get plans together and then get everybody mobilized and out to site. But uh, we're, we're uh, in full gear right now. Uh, the multifamily portion of the project, uh, all six buildings are up. Um, we're dry, drywalled an MEP through about four of them. 
um, the pool started and uh, a lot of the site works in place. Um, the city sidewalk that you guys asked us to put in from our development down to Harbin is completed. Um, and I would say we've got probably 80% of the dirt brought in on the back part of the parcel. One of the things we, we've brought in probably 250 to 300 truckloads of dirt to bring the parcel up to slow down the water so it um, flows naturally through the pro uh, property, um, which was uh, a major undertaking on the project. But everything's going along uh, well. Um, one thing I would like to note that uh, we, we said at the beginning that we would use a lot of local contractors and suppliers. Um, our site guy was local, our concrete guy is local, the plumbing contractor, the electrical contractor, the MAP contractor is local. Pates is supplying all of our building materials. Um, I'm trying to think of who else along the lines. We, we do have a couple uh, companies coming from the Metroplex for um, uh, just drywall, I think, finishing and maybe flooring, but uh, uh, appliances are so lo locally. Uh, our landscaper is going to be local. The painter's local. The roofer's local. So we really did, as I said in the beginning, we tried to work with, with companies in the area, and I think we've really held up to that. We appreciate that. Questions? How's the, have you started renting out the multifamily? We have. So I don't, that's not my part of the game, but I, I, I think we're close to 50%. And it really started taking off when, when the buildings got up and going, and you can now see like the siding going on. And uh, um, it's a little bit later lease up market for the students than we're used to. Um, but that's, we found out kind of across the board how the market is. But we also have young professionals. Uh, one of the first um, units lease was a, a professor coming in from uh, the university, which is what we, what, what, we, what we want. We want to mix. Alan, I think we heard that there were 600 freshmen that didn't have housing for September. Uh, at least. I've heard various numbers, but I think that's the lowest. Over 1,200 that don't, they don't have houses. If you know anybody, I've got 90 beds. Fresh, <laughs> <laughs> appreciate have you doing what you said you'd do, especially working in the neighborhood. I appreciate that as well. Like I said before, thank you for spending some money in Steamville, Texas. We'll tax you for everything we can get you for. Wow. You didn't say that when we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have one of the lowest tax rates in the part of this part of Texas. So thank you for what you're doing. Anybody have any questions? <clears throat> okay, well, thank you very much. We're gonna still in a public hearing. So anybody else want to speak in favor of the request? In opposition? Here now we'll close the public hearing and consider approval of development schedule extension for plan development case numbers PD 2020-003 and PD 2020-004 and PD 2020-005 to be modified to extend it till July 1st. Is that correct, Steve? So I hear a motion. So moved. So have Ricky makes the motion. Anybody second it? Second. Gerald seconded it. Any further discussion? Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. You have your extension, Steve. Thank you. All right. Well, that's public. That's all you have, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Whew. You've been bringing a lot up here. But the development's good, though. We appreciate that. Monica, financial reports. We have. <coughs> I'm going to hold true to my word. We're going to get out of here at 715. So, Monica. Speak in shorthand. <clears throat> so this is the financial review for March 31st, 2021. We're halfway through our fiscal year. And once again, some of our financial indicators um, vary, but we still have an overall positive um, outcome. We received 94,000 in property taxes in the month of March, resulting in 217,000 or 3.48% increase over the funds collected through last March. The 6.45 million collected fiscal year to date is 97.02% of the budget, which is slightly less than the 97.64% anticipated. We received 556,000 in sales tax in March, resulting in 589,000 or 17.83% more than the funds collected through last March. The 389, 3.89 million collected fiscal year to date is 62.39% of our 6.24. Uh, million budgeted, uh, which is higher than the 50.51% that I anticipated. Which shows our economy is doing well right now. Yes. <clears throat> um, the lodging establishments have reported 195,000 in hotel, hotel occupancy taxes through March. 
Um, last year was 231, so we're still down. We've received 30,000 of the sports venue tax through March. We spent 225,000 in hot funds through fiscal year to date as compared to 102 last year. And that's, you know, again, due to our day trip or contract and our gateway planning. We haven't seen a lot of the Moolah Fest uh, expenditures coming yet. The target budget for operating revenue is 16.4 million. We received 16.8 million uh, fiscal year to date, resulting in 383,000 over our target budget, and that's sales taxes and service charges. The target budget for operating expenditures is 10.5 million. <clears throat> We've expended 9.9 .9 million fiscal year to date, which is 593,000 um, under our target budget. Our operating revenue last year was 16.5 million. The current year is 16.8, which is 290,000 uh, increase due to our property tax, sales tax, and service charges. And our operating expenditures last year were 9.62 million. The current year is 9.89 million, which is 259,000 increase. A lot of that has to do with our um, costs associated um, with the COVID-19 pre prevention, our stimulus grants to reduce the impact of COVID-19, some of our damage claims, wages, advertising, and our uh, gateway planning. For our investments, our total market value of cash and investments on March 31st, 2021 was $44,831,902. Um, it's allocated 3% as our, in our demand account, 38% in our Techstar investment pool, and 59% in the Tech pool investment pool. We've earned um, $11,406 in interest for the quarter. The average yield to maturity for all of our account types for the quarter was 0.05%. Um, just for the investment account was 0.04%, and the average yield to maturity for a three-month treasury bill for the quarter was 0.05%. So, not much. Yeah, it's not very much at all. So. May I have any questions for Monica? Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Sanford, remember we have an executive committee tonight with you there. Okay. <laughs> start, the, start the timer. Yeah, we, well, Chris gave me an extra three minutes, so... Uh, I got That's news for you. <laughs> uh, kind of the cool thing about this, first of all, thank you guys, and, and mm -hmm. good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, on, in April of 2019, we were having discussions about uh, an expanded retail area and different kinds of things related to what was then called Project CS. You may remember that. Uh, we were also having discussions about what it might look like to put a TIF in place. That was two years ago, April. Last year in April 2020, we were having to get busy with uh, the restart program. Whole different kind of year. Everything went on hold and we started something completely different. Although that was successful, it was hopefully and thankfully very uh, temporary. This year, April, 20, uh, April of 2021, so just a few days ago, that Project CS, which is now known as Washington Commons, is about to go vertical within the next few days. You just approved the third phase of the TIF which is uh, really super, and we, we, we congratulate you on that. I think this is going to be very, very good for the future of Stephenville. I'd like to thank you for that. I'd also like to thank you for what you did on the Spectre or Fireside uh, District. And by the way, it's 39%, Steve. You are at 39% on, on your leasing right now, but it is moving up uh, very rapidly each and every week, and you should hit your numbers the way you want them to. So sure. just find out. Uh, next week, May 9th through 15th, has been declared National Economic Development Week, recognizing groups such as ours, CETA, for our role in stimulating local economies. And I join my colleagues across the state with a lot of pride for the state of Texas because we've just been named uh, for the 17th year in a row the best state for business in the nation by Chief Executive Magazine. That's another great recognition. If it's happening across the state, that means it's happening in our local and rural communities such as ours. Governor Greg Abbott has also declared next week Small Business Week. Our state's small businesses, have, as you know, have faced so many challenges in the past year, but have remained kind of the backbone of the economy. And in fact, nearly half of the state's workforce is employed by 2.8 million small businesses, which account for 99.8% of all businesses in Texas. And this statistic shows just how vital small businesses are. And of course, our town is made up primarily of small businesses. So we need to get out and recognize them, but we also need to support them. And I'm asking the public to continue to support, as you have in the last year, our business uh, economy, specifically our small businesses. Lastly, it's currently, and it's Julie, you'll appreciate this, it's Travel and Tourism Week, which comes at a good time for Texans. Uh, that's this week. 
we want to encourage people, and I know you guys are already doing that, to as they make their travel plans and as most of the state is opening up, people will be making decisions based on where they're going to spend time over the next few months. And we, of course, want to encourage them to come to Stephenville and increase that uh, economic pie by spending their money right here. So we're very excited about that. Some interesting things about employment and employment numbers. Again, going back in April of 2019, we had and we were enjoying an unemployment rate of just 2.5%. Uh, that was actually a low as it stands for the last three years. Fast forward again, going to April of 2020, and it was at 8.5%. That was the results of many of the uh, things related to COVID. And that was the high point, in a bad way, but the high point of unemployment. Right now, as of March, we don't have the April numbers yet, uh, but uh, March of this year, 5.4%, uh, but the trend is looking good. So we're getting back down to where we want it to be. You know, and if you ever want anything to drop, it's unemployment numbers, but that's, uh, that's something that's happening in our town. Some other interesting things. Average household income, you'll, be a, you'll, you'll appreciate this. In 2017, uh, so just a few years ago, the average household income in Stephenville was, uh, in Erath County, was 59000 725. Today, just four years later, it is 71,676. It's on the upward trend. That's where we want it. It's not perfect and it's not the most wonderful thing, but it helps and it helps us in economic development because we can put out there a higher means of uh, payment, which means a higher means of disposable income for those that are going into retail or commercial type things. The median household income has also risen. And of course, uh, just even from our, our standpoint, from CETA and, and Monica's provided all these this information we provide to our board, uh, even through six months, our sales tax portion of what comes in, we're at 62.5% through the first six months instead of 50, so we're up 12.5%, which is, again, a good sign for people spending money in our economy. So that's all the good news. And all, well, that's most of the good news. The other good news, though, I'd like to say is just over the past couple of years, and I'll read this because it's, you know, it's, it's really important for us to, to put this out publicly. Over the last couple of years, Stephenville has enjoyed record growth in investment. Uh, in fact, uh, one thing that comes up in a little bit, it's up through December of last year, uh, we have spent as CETA one and a half million dollars and the result has been a hundred million dollars investment in our community over the last 18 months. And we have about 200 million still on the books. Pretty good return on investment, Mayor. That's what you asked for always. So we continue to do that. But as we've done that, it's been the re renewed commitment and relationship we shared with the city. And that's truly been the catalyst. The partnership I have with Mr. Barnes and the city staff uh, uh, has been wonderful. Uh, and I'd be remiss, though, if I didn't take a moment to thank each of you on council. Uh, specifically today, I'd like to thank you not only for the things you've done today, but I'd like to point out Mr. McClinton and Mr. Robinson, as you guys are heading towards the greener pastures of non-council work. What? Yeah, I know. You didn't know it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you need to get the election results. <laughs> you didn't get a single vote this time. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a cheap shot. Right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frankly, even from your wife. <laughs> I mean, that's just how it is. No, but I do want to say, I, you know, we joke around, and we get to joke around a lot, and I get to joke with these guys outside of this venue. But, Mark, specifically for you, your grasp of finance and coalition building has enabled me to carefully draft and craft presentations, and your uncanny ability to ask the tough questions in private prepared me and our organization to have the easy answers in public. So thank you, Mark. And Gigum, by the way. Nick, your understanding of community needs and emotions has helped me to understand the impact of those decisions, and not only when a project <coughs> should progress forward, but how it should move forward. And I thank you for that. And Gigum, just <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> so I'm also proud to call each of you a friend, and I thank you for that. Uh, I know on behalf of the CETA team, and we have our chairman, Mr. Gifford, here, uh, we want to know that uh, we want you to know that your service to this city has been honorable, it's been respected, and it will be missed. But we do also welcome our new council members when that time comes, so thank you guys for stepping up and serving as well. I'm sure you'll easily be able to take these guys' place. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean that. Uh, I don't mean Giggle, that. Right? Well, maybe. Yeah, but gig them. <laughs> Either way. Anyway, I do thank you guys very much for your service. It's been a pleasure to work with you from our organization to the council, but also individually, so thank you very much. <coughs> On that, I'm done. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Next item is consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? Mayor, I move approve consent agenda. Ready to make some motions. Who seconded it? I'll second it. Ricky seconds it. Further discussion? Proceed to vote all in favor, say aye. 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 Same sign opposed? 
Oh, wait a minute. Just hold on a second. We're supposed to consider y'all's adjustment. We'll get back here in just a second. We'll just we'll come back to it in just a second. So the consent agenda has been accepted as as presented. Okay. Come on back up here. We got a motion to make here. You to make your motion. Well, have the discussion. You want to present what your adjustments are? Okay. Do I hear a motion about they have a, they have made a recommendation to to a mid year um, budget adjustment? Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the or approve the mid year budget adjustments from seed as presented. I second. Mark makes the motion and Gerald seconds it. Now, Gerald, Mark, you didn't have to do that just because he's saying something nice to you. He or didn't say, he was dollars. not nice to me at all. <laughs> Are you kidding? Okay. Any discussion? See the vote all in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Thank you, sir. Gig them, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, comments for city uh, city manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, next Tuesday at 5 30 p.m., that's May the 11th, there'll be a special city council meeting to canvas the May 1st vote and to swear in the new council members. Uh, on May 18th at 5 30, we'll have our, our council committee meetings. And, and as one final thing tonight, uh, Mr. Mayor, I had wanted to give a uh, brief update on where we are with Moolah Fest. When I got the update from, from uh, Julie, I said, I'm going to surrender my time to, to Julie to give you my update on, on where we stand today with Moolah Fest. Thought. Julie, take a stand. Raise your right hand. <clears throat> so I just have a very brief little presentation, but um, thanks to Kelly and her team, we are <laughs> making great strides for Moolah Fest, and we have a, a great schedule of events that we've updated, and um, we have some wonderful <clears throat> bands, a very large carnival. So. Um, Carnival Americana will be here uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a larger carnival than we had last year, and we're super excited to have them. Thursday night, we'll kick off the Techstar Ford Summer Concert Series, and that will be Scott Kirby and Davin James, and then we'll have a Sleep at the Wheel Thursday night. Um, we'll also have our Dairy Appreciation Dinner that night, and you're all invited. Ready to make us some make us some clients out of that sleep the little time. <laughs> <laughs> Friday. I don't think we allow those activities in our city. Oh, park. Oh, <laughs> we have Michael Hicks coming back. He performed uh, last, last time we had it. We have uh, great vendors, uh, great <clears throat> food trucks, and we'll have our beverage tent. Uh, we'll have the Phil Collins experience will be performing uh, Friday night. And... Uh, some neat things happening on Saturday. Uh, we'll have a, a fly-in at dawn. Both those nights, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we'll have a balloon glow. Um, we've added an utterly epic fun run <laughs> at 8 a.m. And uh, it'll, it'll be really neat. The dairy area on Saturday will feature uh, the historic Longhorns herd from the Texas Historic Commission. Um, We'll also have the mobile dairy classroom on hand from Southwest Dairy Farmers. Uh, we have the Decades Band. We have Party Machine. And we have Elton Dan and Gypsies, Doves, and Dreams, which is a Fleetwood Mac tribute. So lots of fun new things coming this year, thanks to Kelly. Uh, our sponsorships, we have a really unique sponsorship that I'll start off with. Um, Alan Vanderhorst and 360 Ag Management is going to give each of his employees $100 in moolah bucks. And there's 260 employees, so that's about $26,000 being pumped into our event. And those employees are very excited. We're very excited to have them come. And those will be accepted at our carnival, our food uh, vendors, as well as the beverage. And so that's going to be really exciting for us. Um, our other sponsorships that we have, we have balloon sponsors that are $2,500. We have three of those so far. We are still uh, asking for sponsors. So if any of you have a business and would like to participate, please be a sponsor. Um, our pilot mill sponsor returns with its Citizens National Bank. And then we have banner sponsors. We have four of those so far. 
Uh, we knew this year we have concert friends and Waste Connections and First Financial Bank. We still have one of those still available. It's a, a big one, so we would love to have any of y'all be a concert sponsor with your name behind the bands. Uh, we do have one Best in Show, and then we have a lot of in-kind help. Western Dairy Transport's doing the dairy dinner, and uh, Whataburger is doing breakfast for the pilots and tr bags for them. Bramlett Implement will do vehicles, and uh, Beneath the Surface News is already posting things and is our advertising sponsor. Uh, the statewide advertising that we're doing is uh, we have the Day Tripper. He's doing a giveaway in a couple of weeks to promote Moolah Fest, and then he has a monthly newsletter which ran earlier this week with Moolah Fest in it. Ride Texas Magazine is a motorcycle magazine we did a half page in the spring edition we have event listings in texas co-op power and texas highways our regional uh advertising will be done through caleb and uh our local is of course beneath the surface news uh the flash and the empire tribune so um the cost savings this year we have 10 balloons versus 15 and so um the lodging and the pilot fees and all those will be reduced. We will not have an announcer this year because we have the, the great concerts. Um, we have a larger carnival and we get the percentage for them and they're coming it's staying through Sunday. We've outsourced our beverage tent so we no longer have that cost and then we've outsourced the wine tasting to the Texas Forts Trail so we no longer have that cost and then we have the utterly epic fun run with entry fees for that. So. We're trying to help cut corners for, for our costs. And then the expenditures so far, we have a total of seven bands, and that cost is $28,000. Um, our rental amenities, everything's listed here, our face painter. Um, that's not the total fees, but so far it's around $45,000 that we're spending. We still have some printing and some other costs that, that we've not placed yet. And then our revenue, in addition to the 18000 or so that we've raised in sponsorship so far, uh, we have about 2240 coming in for all the vendors in the carnival sales. So. And I want to say it was a, it's a great thing you're doing. I appreciate this. I remember two years ago when we had this, obviously COVID killed it last year, uh, it I heard more comments positive about Moolah Fest, and boy, this is really good what you did for Steamboat Texas. So thank you for getting this done. You're well, so welcome. It's our pleasure. And thank you for running it much more economically efficient. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, because you had the you have the eighteen thousand in sponsorships oh, plus the twenty six thousand. Yes, yes. And, and that, so, so again, we are still taking sponsorships. We have a few that are. Uh, coming as well that just had not confirmed as of tonight but i welcome a sponsorship from any of you all because i think it's a great opportunity we expect a great crowd and it's wonderful name recognition to not only the local citizens but the ones visiting we estimated how many people attended two years ago it was around three or four thousand i think is what the the numbers we did that off that telephone yes survey thing okay you may also have any questions. Thank you, Julie. You have it. Okay, thank you very much. No, sir, that concludes my report. Council members, Mark, this won't be your last time. You're going to say something. You're going to be here the night we appoint the new guys. So, no, I'm going to say something. Go ahead. You, got, you still got 17 minutes, sir. No, we got to go back in there. So <laughs> we're going to get out of time for that, too. So I had a, a conversation with a couple of guys from the fire department. We mentioned it here tonight, um, that vaccination center. And in that conversation, one name kept coming up time and time again uh, about that. And I think y you pick any measurement you want for that vaccination center, and it's going to be an unqualified success. And it's so because members of the Stephenville Fire Department and others have busted their <clears throat> rear ends to make it so. But again, one name kept coming up from these guys, and that's Chuck Elliott. Mm -hmm. So uh, what they were telling me is that after the thing closed, Chuck's up there getting it ready for the next day and uh, cleaning it, if that's what it took, whatever it took. This guy's taking this on as a project. He's gone above and beyond, and that's what his own guys are saying. So I just wanted to give a shout out to, to uh, Chuck Elliott uh, not only for his decades of service to the, 
to Stephenville, Texas, but for uh, what he's done over there at that vaccination center. And again, that's coming from y'all's guys, so I'm just echoing what he's they're He's a pretty saying. good neighbor, too. Yeah, is he? <laughs> is he a bunker guard? <laughs> and then uh, on a personal note, th this has been such a pleasure for me to do this. Uh, it's been absolute honor of a lifetime just to be allowed to do this. And mm -hmm. it's been extraordinarily humbling for me to do this. It's humbling because anytime you sit in this chair or go out and do anything where you're representing the city of Stephenville, you're, you know you're there only because folks in town, the voters, or in my case, a slim majority of the voters, <laughs> <laughs> they invested their confidence in you to be at those meetings and ask questions and to investigate and ultimately to make decisions on their behalf that will have direct impact on their lives, direct impact. That's a huge responsibility. And if you take a step back and you really think about that for a minute, it is unbelievably humbling. And it's certainly something that I've never taken lightly doing this job. So to those folks who did and have invested their confidence in me to do this, words alone are they're wholly inadequate for me to describe or express my gratitude. All I have is thank you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to serve in this capacity. And to these guys up here and former colleagues from previous councils, folks from the city, everybody I've had an opportunity to work with one-on-one, -on -one, I want you each to know it's been my joy to work with you. And I wish for you success in the city stuff for sure, but beyond that, I wish for each of you success in every aspect of your lives as you move forward. It's been a blast getting to know you. This, because of what you guys have done, all of you guys have done, it's a period of my life that I'll never forget. And to those who made it possible, thank you so much. Mr. Mayor, I think my parting prayer would be that God would continue to bless Stephenville, Texas, and every soul that lives here. Amen. Just well, um, I was going to mention Moolah Fest. Um, and incredible words from Mark. I don't know how you follow up with that, but um, I'll stumble <coughs> through this. Uh, so uh, get with Julie Smith in town if, if you would like to help out. And uh, obviously, please uh, bring your family, friends, and especially your friends and family from out of town. Um, congrats to the Steamville Evening Lions Club on setting a record $265,000 raised at the uh, annual Upland Bird event, and all of that money raised stays right here for the youth of this community. And so uh, thank you to those guys and the hard work that goes into that. Um, also, uh, thank you to, uh, to Chief Harris and, uh, and the words that he shared at uh, Sergeant Watts' funeral. That was just incredibly moving and powerful, and our hearts and soul and our thoughts and prayers go out to the Watts family. And then I wanted to say that, uh, uh, you know, time is the one commodity that you can use, but you can't buy. And in the line of work that I do, a lot of times finding purpose in life is incredibly important. And the two gentlemen that's sitting on either side of me, um, while their time has ended, their purpose and the impact that they've made on this community is no doubt felt, and I appreciate what y'all have done. So, thank y'all. Appreciate those kind words, Justin. That's kind of hard to follow up on there. But um, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been an honor. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I, I've learned a whole lot. I appreciate uh, staff getting to know everyone, getting to work with, with all the staff. Um, appreciate the folks who have sat in this chair with me, uh, the folks who have sat before me, and those that are going to sit after. Um, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun, though. It's very, very rewarding. I'll be glad next week when these things are gone, that's for sure. Um, but in the meantime, just want to thank the folks, countless volunteers, community members that really helped out with the bond initiative. As the, Kenny said, I mean, trust me, there was lots of folks that were involved in that that did not get their praises sung. Um, and, and I'll tell you, of course, whether you're, what side you voted on, I hope everybody in this room at least had a vote because it matters. It truly does when you have 1,600 some people vote in a community of 21,000. Your vote matters. And I'll tell you personally, for me, I mean, of course, it's a very disappointing outcome. 
I think the city of Steamville had a tremendous opportunity we could have capitalized and took advantage of. We failed to do that. Um, and I'll tell you, after that vote was cast, I mean, of course, that's democracy at its finest. You're asking the people of the, of the city to make decisions. And, and to me, I always place that agenda item or that, that ballot item was as simple as this. If you're proud in what those items that are on the ballot show represent currently, then don't, don't vote for it. And I guess the people of city of Steamville are proud of what we have. And I can tell you that I, I'm not. And I want better. And I want better because of I've been here for 31 of my 35 years of existence in Stephenville, Texas. And at the end of the day, I grew up in this community, and I want my kids to have a better community than what I grew up in. Plain and simple. That's what it all comes down to. And, and I feel like to some extent we've, we've failed in that. Um, it's really easy to get down about it, things like that and think that it's a pointless cause, and I'm not going to continue to fight to try to make it better. But... Um, you know, you wake up after the next morning or something like that, and you really think that um, you have the opportunity still to make it better. That's what we have to focus on is what do we do next as a council? What do we do next as a city? What do we listen to those voters? And where do we try to uh, devote resources? Because I've been doing this for almost 10 years now, which is crazy to think about. It truly is. And I can tell you, and Doug can tell you, and Alan can tell you, that as we sit down those budget meetings in July and really start making those hard decisions, it, it's not, the city's not wasting resources. They're not making poor decisions. It's truly an issue of we don't, have the resources financially to meet all of our needs. We just don't. And that's not going to change. We've talked for years about we're going to grow our way out of this. And I agree 100%. It has increased revenues from sex, from sales tax, from the appraisals in property have generated more dollars in this community. But at the same time, I can promise you when we get down to the budget line, it's, it's not there. We can't grow our way out of this problem. I don't know what the solution is. Uh, but I just know the people of this community are great enough to make it happen. And we'll make it happen. And so whatever the promise the future looks like, it's going to be great and the community's going to be better. So um, either way, I guess the point of this is I just encourage you all, let's figure out what we want this community to be. I think we all want it to be better, but what is our vision? And let's really find a way to make that happen and, and, and take what we learned from the past um, couple of months to, to really put that plan in action because we've got to uh, find a way to try to continue to drive success because we've got people here tonight that are from the business community outside. Um, and when they're looking at Stephenville, and, and when you make votes like that, it, it can't help but kind of discourage those folks from wanting to come here uh, because if the people of here aren't willing to make those investments, then why should they? So we've got to refocus, though, and we can do it. I'm optimistic, and I'm more than willing to talk to anybody about these issues. Um, you can come see me anytime. So thank you all. Thanks, sir. I'll start first by thanking Nick and Mark, uh, bo both, of your, both of you, your time spent and the sacrifices you've made have been invaluable to the city uh, we're, we're losing two two really great councilmen and uh, uh, but I do look forward to what the two new council people will bring to the table as well so but but thank you guys for for all of the time and effort that you've put in so um, additionally um, uh, you know uh, Brady I don't think it's any any secret that I'm just as disappointed uh, but <coughs> onward and upward Stephenville it's time it's time to move forward so on February 2nd I made the comment that council was exhibiting democracy in its most pure form and that the voters would decide if they wanted the city to spend money on the ideas we presented them the voters have spoken and it's our duty to listen so the, the message we got was not just no we got direction on what our priorities from our voters now we have some direction on how we missed the mark. We have direction that the majority of the voters might be okay with cutting some services in order to have better streets. As long as it means they don't have to spend any money to do it. But I'm proud that we have about $15 million in street projects slated over the next several months. That we haven't touched the tax rate one ounce of a cent to accomplish and we've done it by being creative we've done it by growth and I'm proud of that and we'll continue to look at those things to try to make things better in the future but we have to engage people better we have to listen better we have to understand that it wasn't all about no new taxes there were parts of it that were just not quite the right plan for enough voters to get on board so we can make those plans better and get those voters on board. So it only required 11% of registered city voters saying no to keep these projects from moving forward. 
And to some, that seems a little bit unfair. There were 7% that did say yes. Most disturbing is there was 82% who simply didn't have a voice, didn't express their voice. They have the voice, they have the right to it, but 82% did not express their voice. Everyone sitting up here loves this city and wants to continue to make it better every single day. And it's our duty to back up, re-engage with our ears open, and figure out what needs to change to turn that 11% into cheerleaders. That's what we've been elected to do, and that's what I intend to spend my next two years, which will also be my last two years, making sure we're working towards that goal. So onward and upward, Stephenville, and as always, it's a great time to live in Stephenville, Texas. Hello. Thank you, sir. I think most of us are disappointed with the outcome, and yet it is democracy. The people have an opportunity to say yeah or nay. They said nay, back to the drawing board and try to come up with something that they will agree with. Uh, to the two gentlemen that are leaving tonight, one of, the, one of the best parts of serving on this council, other than service to the city, is, is making and meeting new friends. Uh, and I have truly enjoyed meeting both of you and working with you and becoming friends with you. And it's more than just a working relationship, it is a friendship. Uh, it's a time that I have spent in enjoying your companionship, your insights, the various talents that you bring are, are just amazing sometimes. And it, it's, it shouldn't be, but it is such a, a nice, an encouraging part to see citizens of the of the community reaching out participating and giving of their time and energy to help the city move forward and i want to thank both of you for that because you have done that admirably i don't want to discourage those who will replace you but they have big shoes to fill but i appreciate both of y'all i wish both of y'all well and i hope that as Mark said, God continues to bless y'all in your endeavors and in your future and in your family and bless the city of Stephenville at the same time. Thank you, both of you. Mark uh, and Nick, it has been a pleasure. Uh, it's been a pleasure serving with you and listening to you and taking your advice and, and, uh, and all we will miss you and and everything we wish you the best and we look forward to uh, the people that will be replacing you uh, be on the board and hopefully the same kind of, of, of strength and all that you've brought will be present in those people uh, the we have coming up business continues as a nominating committee chair it's our responsibility to fill boards and commissions uh, with the uh, committees that we have. We have uh, applications that we are accepting presently for the Main Street Advisory Board, the new one, Planning and Zoning Commission, the Board of Adjustment, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, the Senior Citizens Advisory Board, and the Electrical, Mechanical, and Plumbing Board. Boards. And uh, so if any citizens uh, in this community would like to uh, apply, uh, they will be considered. And uh, our next meeting is going to be on the 18th, and we're going to be talking about uh, filling some uh, uh, and making some nominations to this council for people that serve on those boards. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to also say, you know, as you've heard from some of the other of our fellow council members uh, a feeling of disappointment in the bond election it did tell us uh, things uh, people had an opportunity to go out and vote people had an opportunity to cast their vote the way they'd like to uh, the vote in retrospect solved no problems none we presented to the citizens of this community issues that were problems for us to solve. 
and that we would require funding. Whether it was Belknap Street or the uh, square or the <coughs> many streets, the first, fifth, sixth, whatnot, whether it was the library, senior citizen center, recreation center, which is greatly needed. Also many, the trail, uh, which uh, could have provided uh, a <coughs> significant step up for future grants to finish that trail. Whatever, these were all things that were problems that needed to be funded and needed to be fixed. Those problems haven't gone away. The water and sewer issues still are going to have to be addressed. They're going to have to be replaced. The streets are going to have to be fixed. The Senior Citizen Center is going to have to be replaced. The Rec Center is going to have to be, we're going to have to have new gyms at some point. And we're going to have to have a new library at some point. Because that's what a city and a community does. They address those issues and they make it better and that's called community development. As I said, we solve no problems. We just kick the can down the road a little bit further. What's going to result in is that our citizens eventually are going to have to pay a higher cost. It's going to cost more money to do it in the future because simply because of inflation. The other thing is here we're talking about now and we're hearing on the national scene possible <coughs> interest rates going up on bonds in the future which will cost more also for the citizens but remember this we only fail if we quit we only fail if we quit our attitude is never give up for this community it's too good. So we'll try again and again. Thank you. All right. Um, I just want to start off uh, with a reminder. Kurt and his group do so much for us, so I wanted to give a reminder uh, that there are three opportunities for the church to be the church. This Wednesday night at 7 o'clock uh, at the Birdsong Amphitheater, there's a, a worship and revival service down there. The following day, the National Day of Prayer uh, at the courthouse at 7 o'clock. Uh, you can join the community there. Uh, and the following evening at 6.30 back at Birdsong. So uh, part of what makes Stephenville a great place to live is the people, the community, the leaders that we have, uh, not the people that sit up here. Uh, the, the true leaders are the people that sit in our community and make a difference every day. Mark uh, and Nick, thank you guys so much for your service. Uh, we will absolutely miss uh, your expertise on items, uh, your passion, your love for the city and, and what you've done. Um, and again, like I said, leaders don't sit up here. So I fully expect you guys to continue to, to be leaders in our community uh, as we move forward. And, and part of moving forward is, is listening. And, and the voters spoke. Um, and they spoke loudly. So our job is, is, is not done. As Mr. Cook said, the problems didn't go away. Uh, a child in a wheelchair cannot still cannot get to the child section of the library today. They're no closer. Uh, our facilities are still in the same shape. Our streets are still in the same shape. So we have to continue to work as a community to find a way to do that. And you have a promise from myself that we will try to continue to be creative to find ways to fund those things that have to be done in a city that calls itself the city of champions. <clears throat> That's who we are. We won't quit. We won't stop. The problems are still there. Our job is to figure out how we're going to address them now. And we will. So talk to us as council members. Be engaged. There's boards, there's committees. There's an opportunity to call any of us. I know the phone, they would answer the phone. They will answer emails. We do. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us if you don't want anything to change. But progress happens. As Mr. Askey said, time doesn't stop. 
the growth will be here and it, it is our duty to carry on and continue to make this place truly the greatest place on earth to call home as it is that's all i got well this isn't the last time we'll get to talk about these two gentlemen who are leaving the council because next week on may the 11th at 5 30 the special city council meeting will canvas the votes here swear in new council members and we'll have a reception afterwards and so there'll be an opportunity to you know roast these guys a little bit more and we'll make sure that happens uh they are great great folks uh they've been great council members uh, i remember sitting in uh mcdonald's with nick talking about city council and what he wanted to do in city council you've accomplished everything you've asked you've talked to me about doing mark you've been you know you've been a leader been my right hand and i appreciate both mayor pro tem and also as finance committee chair i appreciate what you've done a lot we're going to have those conversations again next week on may the 11th 5 30 so get ready guys you may want to bring something you know, what never mind just just you know be ready get, be ready we'll have a good roasting and a, and, a, and a reception for them afterwards i want to say this is in stephenville texas we have a great city council look at every one of these people sitting up here their volunteer time the expertise they bring the knowledge you know I, every council member you know I, I visit with them about their committee chairs for example i say you run that part of stephenville texas that's what your job is and that's what they do every one of these people here do that such as tonight you know brandon taking on that particular project that he's you know that's a lot of extra work for him to do that and he does it because he loves this town and so we have a good city council we're going to lose two great council people good friends hard workers we're going to get two more and just get ready to go to work because we have a lot to do we have a lot to do city staff uh we have a good city staff i mean it one of the things that we talk about all the time they talk to me about it and i visit with them a lot about it, is we run this place like a business it doesn't mean you make money it's not it's not a profit loss issue it's how you make decisions would a business person make that decision and we've made some of those um, we have some more to make tonight we have a conversation here in a little bit an executive session we'll talk about some of those things as well um, but this is a good city council and it's put in lots of time everybody up here has done that and i appreciate every, everything that you guys do every every one of you thank you very much okay uh in compliance with the provisions of the texas open meetings law subchapter d government code vernon's texas codes annotated in accordance with section 551.087 deliberation regarding economic development negotiations project blue and section 551.074 personal matters to deliberate the appointment employment evaluation reassignment duties discipline or dismissal of a public officer or employee to wit and that includes the city manager city attorney and city secretary we will stand adjourned there's going to be recess until he gets city council meetings over with until the executive session is over with. thank you all
discussion. There was no activity or decisions made in executive session need public comment, so we will stand adjourned at 827. Thank you all for being here. All right. I'll be seeing you around.